Um, it was us two at first. Well, actually, it was me at first. By myself. <laughs> because I lost my band. <laughs> And I was advertising, thinking I was going to go through a long process, but she just wandered in. We started recording, and we um, didn't stop for quite a while, and uh, just not even asking each other many questions about where you come from, what you do. Like it was just come in, record. Do you want to come back next week? Yeah. Okay. Let's record some more. That was it for quite a while. Jason came on board after quite a few months of us recording and he just heard the stuff and he was looking for a band. And he's, he's one of those people that needs to make music all the time. He's pedal crazy and he's got a way of making one guitar sound like three at a time. Yeah, we needed a, a drummer for our recordings. We were going to the studio. We had done a bunch of stuff in Pro Tools in our garage studio, and um, which actually sounded really cool. Um, we were like, yeah, you know, we kind of need a live drummer. And um, we were thinking about people we knew and everything. And Max was like, oh, there's this guy, Sean. And he came in and uh, recorded some tracks with us. And I was just like, I was pretty much blown away. My big obsession is really like, you know, the pre, just pre Britpop era when England was being really creative, you know, in the early 90s and very, very late 80s with creation records and all that stuff where anything would go. It didn't have to even sound English, you know, where they took American influences and everything was just going off and over here you had the grunge thing going on at the same time. But it was a very creative time and I lived over there at the time as you can probably detect. And, and um, I just think there was so much depth, you know, there was dance music crossing into indie rock and there was um, all that outrageous kind of feedback stuff and rock and roll stuff being done but without that attitude, you know, that had to be there for 70s rock and roll. It was like that was gone, punk wiped it out and now you've got an open playing field and, and you've got rock music with an attitude but without like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm going to ride a Harley Davidson and have a lot of chicks and you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a really like cool connection between us as well because I, you know, like I said, I, I was I was into stuff that was crossing over from guitars to electro. Like, so I was like the queen of, you know, hey, I'm gonna start this song on an iPad. You know, I'm gonna like do a song. Pull out my thing. iPhone. Yeah, yeah, anything. <laughs> Just like run an app. You know, like run my iPhone through I'll, a pedal I'll play or something. To it and we would get weird shit going. You know. I think the original shoegaze stuff was very song based, it was very based like on 60s um, sensibilities in terms of the songwriting, it was always very pop, you know, what Riot did and people like that. And they just added the huge guitars to like, just, you know, be more dreamy about it and get a feeling going that was more of the times, you know. I think all the art and everything that is around the band is really important and I think we've been really lucky with what we've accumulated for this first single and, and, and I, I'm really really happy about how you know all that stuff came out because it all ties together and it all evokes a certain mood that is very close to what we were trying to do with, with the song I think you know what I mean like the mood of the song the mood of the video and the artwork kind of have a coherent feel and I think sometimes people forget that that makes things a lot more powerful I'm just really looking forward to playing out. I think it's time, you know.